Welcome everybody to yet another Mando Lessons Live. We're having a log, great classic bluegrass tune. Um, play a little bit of I'll do it in the key of G just to pull something out here and see what happens. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit about what I'm doing. There's a rabbit in the log and I ain't got my dog. How will I get him? I know. Get me burned, all twisted in his hair. That's how I'll get him. I know. I know. I know. That's how I get him. I know. Get me burned, twisted in his hair. That's how I'll get him. I know. All right, I have a request to do it in A. I'll see if I can sing it that high. Gonna get that old hair, roll him in, him in, roll him in the flame and make him brown. Get night while the moon's shining bright. Find me a place to lie down, to lay down, to lay down. Find me a place to lay down. You steer night while the moon's shining bright. Find me a place to lay down. All right, here we go. It's a great key, but it's too high for me to sing anyway. I gotta get a guest vocalist in for it in that key. But um yeah, so great, great tune, great opportunity for playing some breaks. I hope everything is it's not choppy anymore. It seems like it's still slowly getting better. Audio is lagging video, but it's better. Okay, let me know if it stays really out of whack, and I'll I'll continue to work on that. Um, yeah, so I mean, a great. I I've said this a couple times, but you know, my my go-to thing, playing a break. I'm um, really first just try to get my hand in the general position of playing the melody. So rabbit in a log, and I ain't got my dog. How will I get in? I know. So start by just finding that, uh, you know, getting that first kind of open note of the melody. In this case, it's the open E string. And then from there, often it's the, the, the hardest part is kind of finding those first couple notes. Rabbit in a log and I ain't got my dog. So starting there, adding a little bit right, of right hand in just to keep the train moving. Um, and hopefully that uh, makes a little bit of sense. And then from there, you know, adding in a little bit of double stops. I've got a whole series in the Technique and Fundamentals on adding double stops to your playing. Um, and that'll get you going. Or watch some of the song series in the song section. I go through that. Maybe I should just do it on Rabbit and the Log. It's often requested. Um, And so another good question from Recovering Bassist, how do you know when, what pickup notes to play going into a break? Well, it's, it takes a little bit of sometimes like trial and error. Um, you know, what you, you need to think about is, there's a rabbit in a log and I ain't got my dog. So you kind of have one, two, three. Rabbit in a log. And, uh, so you, you have a little bit of time there, and you now know that rabbit, the word rabbit is going to be that open E string. 
So there's no one right pickup pattern. Um, you know, starting from somewhere down lower can be nice to kind of ease up into that first note of the melody. You do something chromatic like that. Four, five, six, open. Four, five, six, grab it in a log. Or you could do a scale. Two, four, five. Two, four, five, grab it in a log. And those different sound like this. One, two, three. Uh, let's try that again. One, two, three. So there's that one. Uh, and then the chromatic one would sound like this. One, two, three. Uh, let's try that again. One, two, three. And then adding little variations from there. You know, tr try a bunch of pickup. The best way to learn to, like, kind of get pickup notes and lines into a break it's just, you know, try a bunch of them. You got to land on that melody note, or at least the, the note you mean to hit. It's got to be real solid and in the right kind of place. But from there, you know, if you just go like... It can be anything. Um, it can get a little wacky, and as long as you really nail that first spot, it's going to be great. I'm going to go back up here and catch up with the chat. I'm glad everything seems like everything's back to normal. I hope I'm synced up. If not, let me know, and I will... Uh, try to mess with the audio and get it in sync but hopefully things are back in order uh recovering basis says i'm still having issues picking while going to a different string whether i should keep going keep the up and down motion when changing strings or not short answer is yes keep the up and down motion a great pattern uh i've got uh in the technique and fundamental section of my website i've got a uh a video on right hand exercises i actually recently reorganize the technique and fundamental section so that you can sort of they're a little more sorted out by what they're working on i think there's a right hand technique whole little header and one under there is a little exercise where i, I do little practices like this like going down on the d string and up on the a string or you can do a lot of d's and then one a and getting that or doing the same thing the other direction, down on the A, up on the D. Or a lot of A's and a D. And just sort of forcing your hand, because that, that up and down pattern, unless you're playing a jig, is totally what you want to be doing. That's really going to be your uh, a good, uh, helpful thing. So keep that right hand moving. You get that down, and that's that's a huge um, kind of block to get over, and it really just kind of cleans everything up once you can really stop thinking so much about whether your right hand's doing what it should be doing, and just kind of trust in the trust in the right hand because you know you've got your technique down. Opens up a whole new world of uh, musical opportunities. All right, let's see here. Cool. Everything is in sync. Glad to hear it. Um, gonna catch up with the chat. I got a little behind doing those tech problems, but uh, Tom said, uh, "Let's see, uh, Banjo JL Bluegrass Argentina says, are you live? Yes, I am live right now. Thanks for joining us. No, your English is great. Your English is much better than any other language than I would try to speak. I don't know any other languages, so if English is your second language, you're you're doing <laughs> far better than most of us. Uh, your, your English is great. Um, Tom says, hope you're doing well. I'm doing well. It's too hot for me, but other than that, things are great. Um, wondering if I have any tips on how to finger E and B scales in the first position. In, within the first seven frets. Yeah. Um, so there's an E scale. Um, something that's really going to help you is, I've talked about this before, but um, go to jazzmando.com and look up the FFCP um, exercises. They talk about a bunch of different 
um, kind of ways to use your right hand in closed what it stands for is four finger, four finger closed position scales. And they'll oh. have you do things like getting your pinky in there. So that's just starting on the second fret of your D string is an E. And you're going two, four, five, uh, sorry, two, four, six, seven. And then same thing on the A string. Two, four, six, seven. And then two, two, four, five, seven. Um, that'll help you out with that um, E scale. And then the B is the same thing, just moved up onto your A string. And then from there, uh, you can kind of go into a half position for B. Um, so your, your pointer finger is going to be more centered around the first fret. Your middle finger is going to be on the second fret. Ring finger on the fourth fret, pinky on the sixth, and you get uh, four on your going from on your G string four six, and then first on your D one two four six one two on your A string, and then from there you can maybe shift back into uh, first position and two four six seven two four six seven. Um, but there's also a bunch of different ways if you get out of first position into whatever it would be second position I think I'm not great on calling positions by their correct names but I think that would be second position with your pointer finger on the set the fourth fret um that would be you know I think another thing that's really helpful beyond just working on those scales is find some tunes or transpose some tunes you already know into E and into B you know take a um take a G tune and move it into B. You're going to bring it up two whole steps or take a D tune and bring it down to B, down a minor third. Um, you might run out of notes going that way, but you know, see what you can do. Take a, a couple tunes, move them into the keys you're trying to work on or learn some tunes that were originally written in those keys and go for it. It'll be hard at first, but the more you do, the better you'll get. I personally, I'm not great in the key of E and B mostly because I just play traditional fiddle music from Ireland and America and Quebec where there aren't that many tunes in those keys, so I don't play in those keys all that much. But it's always good to practice, and I wish I was better at it. So I should I should do a little practicing myself. Uh, let's see here. Tom, so, let's see. Yep, Tom says, I've seen some people teach them while moving the fingers around with slides to skip awkward stretches. How would you teach them? So yeah, I would, uh, you know, especially that B, um, B scale, get into that half position with your pointer finger in your left, on your left hand on the first fret. Um, and use that FFCP on jazzmando.com. Alberto says, hello from Puerto Rico. Thanks for joining. Do I know any Latin songs? I do not, unfortunately. I wish I did, but that's way outside my expertise, but I should learn some. Um, just going to take a quick look here. It seems like everything's still running good. Uh, Kevin says, loving the minor pentatonic scale. Any tips? And what is the most important scale for Irish fiddle tunes, bluegrass, etc.? Um... I'm not great on my different scales. Um, I think, again, the FFCP uh, exercises on Jazz Mando, I think they might have some minor pentatonic um, scale exercises. Uh, so check that out. In terms of most important scales for Irish fiddle tunes, bluegrass, etc., your big scales are all going to be, for the most part, major. You're going to have G major, D major, A major, less frequently... C major and E major, or F. Um, and then the minor keys, sometimes you'll have A minor, um, B minor, E minor, G minor. Um, but pretty much major and minor. In Irish tunes, you're technically going to be playing in Dorian. So you'd be in E Dorian, which is the same notes of a D, D major scale. But um, just sort of moved. I actually have a lesson in maybe in the music theory section of my website talking about why um, sort of the keys that Irish people play in or Irish musicians play in 
are what they are. It has to do with playing a whistle or the pipes. Um, so check that out. Hopefully you aren't too disrupted by the probably two dozen <laughs> motorcycles that are going by my window. Um, Dodman311 says... Um, oh, I look like I actually I missed a couple. I'll try to get back to the top of my list here. Chip says, sometimes on the second break, I might play a more chordal break, lick-driven. First break should be melody-driven. Monroe is big on this. Sometimes his breaks were hugely different from melody. Yeah, totally. You know, getting into some of those positions. working out of those chop positions. I think that I have some lessons on that in the technique and fundamentals section. Uncle Bobby, thank you so much. And sorry for the delayed response on the super chat. Always appreciate the donations. Thanks for joining us. You're a regular here. It's great to see you again and appreciate the, the support. Uh, Robert says, do you have a lesson on rabbit in a log? I do not. Um, but I think you could pick it up pretty quick. It's, uh, just a regular old three chord tune um but maybe i should make one for the website i get a lot of requests for it and i should i'm always looking for more songs to put up so i will add that to my list uh recovering bassist says who is your personal favorite mandolin player and why that is a good question i think currently it kind of goes back and forth i was really into chris Thiele when i was first getting started he's the first mandolin player that i heard and i loved his technical ability and his ability to play all kinds of crazy notes and songs and stuff. Um, and then I kind of got more into Bill Monroe and Sam Bush and some of the more straight ahead bluegrass stuff. I had an Andy Statman phase where I was really into kind of, I, I studied some kind of far out jazz, open improvisation, free jazz stuff in college and really got into appreciating what Andy Statman does. Um, David Grisman, I love. Um, they're all, they're all great. Um, Norman Blake, great mandolin player, very straight ahead stuff. I love. I mean, he's he can do anything he wants really, but very solid foundation there. I think maybe recently one of my favorite mandolin players is Caleb Clotter from the Foghorn String Band. Um, he's a just really great singer and mandolin player and guitar player and fiddle player, a little bit of everything. But his mandolin playing is always really spot on. Nothing super fancy. All his breaks, he pretty much just plays the the solo. Uh, or sorry, he just take, plays the melody with a little bit of uh, double stops here and there, but really straight ahead, great, powerful sound out of his mandolin. Fills the role of the mandolin in his band just perfectly to my taste. Uh, the Pelican says, when I chop, all I do is on is chop on the offbeat, but I see others on YouTube strumming and chopping. Can you explain? Yeah, so sometimes people will add little kind of ghost downbeats. Not even ghost, they're 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 fully played. So if you're chop, so if you're basically going boom, 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 a lot of people will add just a little bit of downbeat, often just like a kind of muted G string. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. See, that little note at the beginning is on the beat. And it, it can help kind of keep your place rather than feeling like you're just like only going for the offbeat. It gives your hand a little bit more to do, which can kind of lock you in on the sound. And you can add a little, uh, you know, there's all sorts of right hand stuff you can do as long as you keep that chop going in the background. Lots of little kind of mute. But you really want that chop to be kind of the forefront sound and have that nice steady backbeat going. But then, you know, play around with, you know, getting, as long as you're right, if you watch my right hand when I play those chops, it's just doing down, up, 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 down, up. It's just kind of doing this motion of down, up, down, up, down, up. And you can just add a little bit of that in like you know get your pick going over the strings if you do too much you'll hear it and it'll become more of kind of like a strum pattern than a chop pattern 
Um, but play around with it and see what you can get to kind of add in with other rhythms, things like that. Dodman3, oh, my chat is chopping, or er, my chat is jumping all over the place. Dodman311 says, the neck of my mandolin really wants to fall away, which means more left hand support, which means more drag. Any th thoughts on straps or other techniques to support the neck? Yeah, I'm a huge fan of straps. You know, I can put the mandolin there and it, it wiggles a little bit. Um, the other thing is sort of thinking about your right arm. So, you know, getting a strap, getting your mandolin at that nice kind of 30 or so degree angle. So it's not flat like this and it's not way up here. It's kind of nice in the middle zone. My right arm, flat at my side, bends at the elbow, flop, you know, about 90 degrees and flops over the instrument. I use a little armrest, but you don't need one of these by any means. You know, where, whatever you got here is just great. You know, flop it over. The mandolin, get your hand in a nice picking position. And then what that does is it does a couple things. It pushes the neck kind of out towards kind of your right hand side. It pushes it away from your body a little bit. So this is kind of flat too. My arm hits, it kind of pushes the neck away a little bit. And what you want from your left arm is, you, again, you bend um, at the elbow, you know, a little more than 90 degrees. And you want the neck of the mandolin to fall where your hand naturally is rather than moving your arm to where the neck of the instrument is. So your hand's here, put the mandolin there, your arm flops over here, and that way your hand is in a nice spot uh, on, with, where you don't really need to use much because it's kind of clamped between the, the uh, strap and your arm down here. I don't need to use my hand to hold it up. And then my hand comes up and the neck of the mandolin falls. So if you look from the side, I'm not doing this. That way my shoulder's way back here and my elbow's way out of whack. But my arm comes down, it pushes the neck of the mandolin forward. And then when I move my arm up, kind of put the neck of the mandolin in it, find the nice happy medium. My shoulder and elbow are nice and relaxed all the way through. Mandolin's got a nice, uh, solid secure for my left arm my right arm and the strap i hope that's helpful uh ah recovering basis says i learned a song in f and it went pretty well cash on the barrel head great song i love the way del mccurry sings that one um do i know the drunken sailor's hornpipe it's a great fiddle tune rarely heard on the mandolin i know sailors i don't know drunken sailor's hornpipe i know a song drunken sailor and I know the tune Sailor's Hornpipe. I don't really know it that well anymore. I don't know if that's the tune you're talking about or a different one, but that's the one I know. Um, Uncle Bobby says, what are the basic intervals for scales? For example, whole step, half step. Yep, so starting on a G scale, you have open G whole step to an A, whole step to a B, half step to a C. So the first half is starting note, whole, whole, half. And then you have another hole to your D, open, another hole to your E, another hole to your F sharp, and half to your G again. So you have open, whole, whole, half, whole, whole, so again, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And then you're back to where you started. Can you play Road to Boston? Oh, can I ever. Great tune. Gets played many times at fiddle camp, main fiddle camp every year. A classic. Yeah, I'll do a little music break here and play this great tune. I'm pretty sure it's on my website. If it's not, it really should be.
Red, uh, Red and Log, uh, Road to Boston. Both start with R. Um, great, great tune. I'm pretty sure it's on my website if you want to learn it. And if you ever come to Maine Fiddle Camp, it'll uh, you'll get a plenty of chances to play that one. Anand Mishra says you're is more into Indian classical music. Cool, but you've learned a lot from me. I love Indian classical music. I don't play any myself, but I, I studied a little bit. I played a little bit of Veena for a year. I went to school in southern India for one year and learned a little bit about Indian classical music, but um, mostly the southern uh, southern stuff, mm -hmm. and I love it. I, I wish I knew more, but I love listening to it mostly. Uh, mandolin Srinivas, awesome Indian mandolin player, plays electric mandolin. Very cool. Recently passed away, but or I guess over a year now. But uh, great, great music, uh, and readily found online. There's YouTube videos and stuff. <clears throat> oh man, I am not keeping up with the chat today. All right, uh, that's what I like to see. Everybody's chatting away, which is great. Juiced says I hear people talking about using 1.2 millimeter picks, yet I still use a 0.8 pick. What are your opinions on different pick thicknesses and shapes for certain genres. I think it really depends on the sound you're going for, what's comfortable for you, what keeps you relaxed, um, wh how your instrument responds. So this is an older mandolin. This is a Gibson from the 20s. I use a Fender Heavy. I think it's around one millimeter. I'm not exactly sure how thick these things are. These are just like your total bog standard picks. Regular old teardrop shape. Um, this because you can't quite play this mandolin as hard as I can play my Ellis, um, which I use a thicker pick about 1.5 millimeters. It's a big triangle, it's a little more to hold on to. But you know, I think getting a little selection of picks and seeing what really sounds best and feels best on your particular instrument and your particular playing style is a great use of five or ten bucks to just get a smattering of picks. Um, hope that's helpful. Yellow Rose says, "I bought my mandolin for three hundred and fifty dollars. How long do you think? How long do you think it'll last? I think that will last many, many lifetimes, assuming you, you know, take good care of it and, um, you know, don't leave it out in the rain or anything. These things are, you can get a lot of mandolin for three hundred fifty bucks these days, and, you know, these things will last last a long time. So, just take good care of it, and it'll it'll all. Um, I think I remember your." your mandolin and that thing will that thing will last you forever um it's good good mandolin banjo jl says why in the usa do we play with picks so thick um i think it i think probably a lot of it comes from bluegrass players because they really you know doing that chop sound really you know you can really use a lot of a big thick pick and get a lot of volume out of an instrument that way and i think a lot of people play play bluegrass in the states so that that probably contributes to that sound and that reason for using thicker picks cool uncle bobby says i got to see caleb and reeb my favorite duo kind of half a foghorn string band i saw sammy and nadine recently um at a nice little kind of like house show and they are also that's the other half of Foghorn String Band, and they were amazing. I'd I'd love to see Caleb and Reeb at some point. Hopefully, won't be too long until it happens. But if you ever get the chance to see either duo or the whole the whole group, do it. Yep. Uh, Chip says, "Listen to Adam Steffi. Sometimes he completely mutes his chords. Yeah, play around with how much note value you really get out of your." chops there's a big range you know almost no note and play around with that uh cool glad it's helpful tom i hope it's not my end that's messing with your internet it seems Things seem to be going okay, but uh, I hope this one works out. I think my computer is not happy about how hot it is out. Um, 
Joan says, hello from Barcelona. Thanks for joining us. I found a video of you playing Wheelhouse on YouTube. Are you planning on putting a lesson out? Uh, I'm probably not just because it's technically a copyrighted tune. Um, it's recent composition and I don't care as much about the channel that I have that on. Um, you know, if that got deleted, I wouldn't be so sad. But if Mando Lessons got deleted, that's hundreds and hundreds of videos that would disappear in an instant so i stay away from the copyrighted stuff on on the mandolin channel but i think you could probably find either tabs or a lesson over at mandolin cafe if you ask people in the forum can i do ruben in the key of d not off the top of my head same thing with train 45 from that question from the pelican i appreciate the requests but i can never quite remember ruben ruben that's all i remember ruben <laughs> Cool, Arnold's here. Glad you could join us this month. Rolling in the Rye Glass. Ooh, that. Mick says, do you know Rolling in the Rye Grass? And if so, can you put it up on the site? I know it's on my list. I can't remember how it goes off the top of my um, head. But um, that's a great tune. It's probably up on the session if you can't wait until I'm... Uh, Oh, oh, Ruby. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that is Ruby. Ruby and Ruben. That's what happens when I try to think too hard. Uh, let's see. Cool. Recovering basis. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate it. Uh, always appreciate the donations that come in on here and through the through the website. You guys are all very generous. I couldn't do it without you. Nicked old time with his finger. Picked. <laughs> cool. Some old guy named Kenny. Somebody picked old time with his fingers on a bowl back. That's cool. I'd love to see that. Uh, send me a YouTube video if there are any out there. I'd love to see. That sounds great. Cool. Streaming is going well for Chip. I'm glad to hear it. Uh, all right, I'm almost caught up here, I think, but I hope I didn't miss anything. Oh, okay. Recovering Basis says, does anyone play mandolin without a pick? Uh, and then Richard says, on old god, Kenny, Kenny somebody plays old time with his fingers on a bowl back. Uh, I'd love to see that. Um, yeah, you can do a little bit. It's not very loud. You can try it. Um, I have a lesson on my website on hybrid picking, which is keeping the pick in your hand uh, between your thumb and first finger, and then also using your middle finger. Some people will use their middle or ring or both to. Um, you can get, for example, the G and D strings. If you hit the open G string with your pick, and then while you're picking down with that, you're picking up on the A string, second fret. Um, with your middle finger and it sounds like this you can do a little scale patterns there's a lesson in the technique and fundamental section called hybrid picking if you want to do a little bit of that that comes in handy sometimes cool the pelican says when i'm jamming with others i stay in the background and just chop and listen when the song is over and everyone is talking and tuning, I try to play the melody of the tune they've just done. That's a great idea, you know, really getting those melodies, the song melodies in your head, and then, you know, while it's still fresh, just trying to pick out that melody is going to be a huge help. It's a great thing to do, Pelican, and uh, a great thing for other people to try as well. Uh, Lewis says, is Miss Monaghan's a recent tune? Played it at the session and others weren't familiar with it. I don't, I think it's old. Um, it's, it's fairly common around here in like New England, but that doesn't mean it's common everywhere. So, you know, sessions can be so variable um, that you never quite know who's going to know what. But um, it's, a, it's a, you know, what I do when I have a tune I really like to play that isn't too crazy. And Miss Monahan's is pretty straight ahead. Just, you know, every session or two, just play it again and people will slowly pick up on it. And pretty soon, everybody in your area We'll know how to play it or send them to my website. <laughs> uh, 
but yeah, that's that's sort of what I do is, you know, if, if I have a tune that I'm really excited about and it's not a total jam buster, just every every once in a while, you know, I don't really want to like force people to learn to play it, but I just play it every once in a while, you know, every couple of weeks. And eventually the same way that tunes get into your head, tunes will get into other people's head and they say, oh, that sounds familiar. And then slowly pick up on it over the months. Kenny Hall. Um, cool. Kenny Hall. Search Kenny Hall on YouTube. I think he's the, the bullback, finger-picking, mandolin, old-time player. Uh, I'll have to check that out. Can I do a lesson on the tune Gold Rush? I think that's another copyrighted one, kind of bluegrass standard. I can look into it, though. It might not. I, I'm pretty sure that's a recently composed tune. Kenny Hall on YouTube. Cool. Well, I think I'm all caught up with the uh, the chat here, but if I if I missed anybody, I apologize, and put it back uh, put it back up there and uh, I'll, I'll get to it this time around I kind of lose track of the chat because it jumps around every once in a while play a tune here um, let's see popped into my head that's a tune called cold frosty morning but it's not the cold frosty morning that's on my website uh, it's a different it's also an old-time tune often played in cross tuning by fiddle players the one i've just played there the cold frosty morning on my website is more of a minor tune Both are great tunes. I've heard that that minor version was first uh, picked up as just Frosty Morning rather than Cold Frosty Morning, but everybody around here that I know um, plays it calls it Cold Frosty Morning. Could just be what happens when old-time tunes come to New England. But, um, yeah, that other one's a nice one. It's not on my website, but it's a fun little tune. I think I learned that from the Iron Leg Boys uh, I think their album is on Bandcamp. A lot of great old-time tunes. <clears throat> All right, got some more. Uh, Mississippi Sawyer, I can play. That's a great tune. Um, answer a couple questions. Am I allowed to play Kentucky Waltz? That's a good question. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I also can't remember how it goes. <laughs> so, uh, unconveniently, inconveniently, that's the word I was looking for. I can't play it. Um, the hybrid scale sounds like Blackbird. Oh, yeah. That, that is sort of the, the Blackbird thing, the Beatles song. Thank you, Chip. It says, Gold Rush was written by By Byron Berlein, um, but Monroe usually gets the credit like he does. <laughs> it's not the only time. Uh, yeah, I th that, that rings a bell. Um, Joan Hernandez says, Can you comment on the effect of the tailpiece in the mandolin sound? Not really. Um, I don't have, I've only ever just kind of used the own, the tailpiece that came on any mandolin that I've ever owned. I know some people will swap them in or out and talk about like how heavy the tailpiece is and what it's made of affecting the sound. I, you know, I wouldn't doubt it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I would, you know, I, it seems 
logical to reason that changing something like a tailpiece on a mandolin is going to affect the sound a little bit, change the weight, way the resonance works on the instrument. But um, uh, I've I've never, you know, I think people on Mandolin Cafe and some luthiers are going to have a lot more to say about that than me. Recovering Basis says, have you tried blue chip picks? I have. I used blue chips for many years. Um, anytime I talk about gear on this, not sponsored, anything like that. This doesn't sound like sponsorship either because I stopped using them. Um, I actually found, um, for my money, you know, blue chips are great. I love them, but they're 35 bucks a piece. Um, and I found these Dunlop picks. What are they? Let's have got some here. These uh, brown big triangle picks, about the same size. I used the CT55 blue chip which is around 1.5 millimeters. This is the Dunlop Prime Tone. Big triangle, 1.5 millimeter. I can't tell the difference. So I just used, those are like a dollar or two a piece versus 35 for the blue chips. So I sold all my blue chips and bought a dozen of uh, those and had money left over. Um, catch up with the chat here, make sure I'm not missing anything. Oh yeah, Mississippi Sawyer, I'll play a little bit of that. Any, and then any waltz? Sure, I'll play Mississippi Sawyer and then some kind of waltz. Woodchoppers, squirrel hunters, something like that. Um, in the key of A, what is the pentatonic scale? Starting on the open A string. Open, open two, four, open two, five. great lots of great chats coming in our pick guards annoying when you're playing i'm not a i don't i take them off my instruments um just because i don't ever hit them um and i kind of i find them a little annoying because my hit my like fingers will hit them but i don't actually do too much of hitting the top i do occasionally hit the top of the instrument but i'd rather have that space free to kind of move my hand around than than have it there, so I, I take them off, but it's kind of personal preference. Stone picks, never used them. That's abstracted android says, what are your opinion about stone picks? I've never tried one. Um, I don't, f I can't imagine I'd be a huge fan, but I won't knock it until I've tried it. Um, oh, Kentucky Waltz is also credited to Bill. Waltzing Matilda, that's definitely, uh, Copyrighted, so I can't do that one. All right, I'm going to catch up on some of my tune requests. Mississippi Sawyer. great tune i love playing that tune on oh, claw hammer banjo been working on that instrument super fun banjo tune great mandolin tune too i should make a lesson for that one um let's see a waltz wood choppers breakdown squirrel hunters i'll play a little wood choppers i'm pretty sure this tune's on my website
Chopper's Breakdown. Great tune. All right, let's see. Maiden's Prayer is a great tune. I haven't thought about that tune in years, and I'm not going to be able to pull it out of my head, but that is a great tune. So uh, Uncle Bobby uses Dunlop 1.3 prime, prime Tone. Yep, very similar. Um, difference in tuning between 440 and 432. A little bit. You know, I do a little bit of um, just kind of tuning. Now, I've tried 432. The problem is nobody else plays in 432. Um, so... It, it kind of makes it more of a solo thing, but it's nice to just be a, a little bit flat, kind of a nice sound, or just tuning down a whole step or a half step. It's a nice, a nice change, change of a uh, change of sound. Sam Bush says he uses blue chips in the studio on stage. He uses Fender picks. Huh? Cool. Yeah. Cost too much to lose. Prime tones. Yeah, I like prime tones. Yep. Uh, Cluck Old Hen, great tune. I'll see if I can get to that one. Uh, Sarorn Sang, apologies if I'm not saying your name right. Uh, how do you string the mandolin? Do you do the same as guitar? I don't know if you mean tuning. Uh, the tuning is G, D, A, E from low to high. So it's kind of backwards from guitar. Um, but in terms of like putting the strings on, if that was your question, same same idea as the guitar for sure. Um, how to str oh how to strum the mandolin? Um, yeah, you can do. Uh, what you should do is go to my website mandolessons.com if you haven't already. Uh, it's all free lessons. You can find them here on YouTube as well. Um, there's a there's a strumming pattern series on a different ways, a bunch of different ways to strum the mandolin. Um, in the technique and fundamental section of the website, there's also a little bit of talk of that in the beginners series if you're new to the instrument. And just looking for a basic strumming pattern, uh, check out the beginner series. Oh, it's a Bob Wills tune. Cool. All right, Chip's got all the information on the the tune histories. This is great. Should hire you just to keep me on track of where everything's going. All right, Karen is in Sky current. Oh, from Sky currently in Texas. Awesome. Oh, I hope it's not too hot in Texas. It's too hot in New England for me, so can't imagine. Texas right now. All right, I think I'll uh, I'll play a waltz here, maybe a little bit of Cluck Old Hen, and then uh, send you on your way. It's about one o'clock, and I was up way late last night playing a contra dance for a wedding. Didn't sleep very well, and now it's too hot, and it's got to get ready to do a new, do another contra dance tonight. Um, but I'll play a little bit of a waltz here. I don't know what waltz I'm gonna play. Um, oh, I'll play a tune that is about to come out uh, eventually, next couple of weeks, on my website. It's a tune that I wrote called Cosimo's Flight.
duck old hen after a waltz that's coming out on the website soon called Cosmo's Waltz that I just wrote. Well, thank you all so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, happy weekend to you. Stay cool or stay warm, depending on where you are and how hot it is or cold it is outside. Thank you so much for everybody who could uh, do super chat donations this week. Always appreciate it. And everybody who supports the site. Couldn't do it without you. Uh, but... Once again, have a great week. See you next week. I uh, It was kind of sporadic in June just because of camps, but now I'm back. I'll be doing them most of July, I think. <laughs> Summer's busy, but uh, I'll definitely do a couple more. There's a couple coming in July, so keep an eye out and keep on picking. See you next week, I believe. Alrighty, bye-bye.